if you're at a point in a code where you're doing a 12 lead. Now, I keep bringing up the 12 lead. What I mean by that is, these HTTPs guys can be used, and I, I personally use them two ways, in the field, in two ways. One is 20 to 30 minutes in a code, and wait, let's make sure we're not missing anything, HTTPs. The second way I use HTTPs guys, is if they get ROSC. I want to find out what happened. I go to my HTTPs and I'm like, let's evaluate HTTPs, and if they come back, Hey guys, the Paramedic Coach back here with another video. Uh, if you're just joining us here, hit the subscribe button down below. Join the family here of committed providers that want to get better at patient care, get more confidence, and crush it in EMT and paramedic school. And I'm here to help you. So let's get stuck in. So today's video, guys, we're we'll be talking about is ACLS. So when we're talking about ACLS. What happens when we get down to the end of the code, the end of the call? Um, I'm going to paint a scenario for you. Let's say you've been working uh, a code for, let's say, 20, 30 minutes, okay? Um, it's the patient's still in a systole or PEA, meaning that there's, you know, the heart is not pumping, guys, okay? The patient is, you know, like currently deceased, okay? We're working the patient. Now, ACLS says there's something called like H's and T's, okay? Now this is powerful. I've used this in the field, in the field literally, it's powerful. Um, I love it, H's and T's. I go over it a lot because it gives you that refreshment. Yeah, hey, are we missing anything? Are we missing anything? Yo, H's and T's, I have to do H's and T's. Beautiful, I, I love it. So guys, H's and T's are the things that could have caused the arrest that you might be missing. Okay, and we're gonna go through one by one each of them, and then we're gonna break them down a little bit. Like, what are you, what are you gonna do if you want to treat it, or if you think, or it might be it? So let's get stuck in. So you'll notice there's two first, the two arrows point to these ones. Now these ones have been taken out of the algorithm, not by me, just by the bodies, if you will. But what I can tell you is, I like to still think about them. I still think about it as old school. So I have included trauma and hypoglycemia in here. Keep it in the back of your head. Uh, for testing purposes, obviously, do what your teacher is telling you to do, but in the real life scenario, don't forget about these things. They're good things to think about, okay? So first, H's. We have hypovolemia. So what that means is, could it be a loss of uh, blood? Could it be a loss of blood, of body fluid, if you will, okay? Is the patient hypovolemic? Do they need fluid or blood? Okay, is that what they're missing, okay? Next is gonna be hypoxia. So is the patient hypoxic, right? Is that a problem? You know, if you're intubating the patient or we have them on a BVM, what's the O2 stack? You know, the thing is, once you get a line in, okay, and you have that bag going, you're treating hypovolemia, okay? Once you have them on the correct airway and you're oxygenating the patient best you can, ventilating the patient best you can, hypoxia is being taken care of. So now we get down to uh, uh, hydrogen ion acidosis. Okay, whoa, 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 what is that? Take off the crazy part here, hydrogen ion acidosis. Is your patient acidotic? If they are, you can give them bicarb to bring it over to where they need to be, okay? Um, this is the on here, okay? Next, hypo or hyperkalemia. Now, where could we figure out about hypo or hyperkalemia? Well, I have to both of these two right here. Think about dialysis patients, uh, diabetic patients, right? Think about these two right here when you talk about these two, okay? Now, especially with dialysis patients, electrolytes, with a hypo and hyper K. Now, where else can we diagnose hyper K or hypokalemia? 12 lead EKG, okay? You can do a 12 lead, which you might do at some point. Yeah, you might find it, put you in the right direction, okay? Always remember, guys, the one thing that we don't have in EMS is the blood work. If we had blood work, a lot of these things would be taken care of, but we don't, so we always want to go through these things, okay? Finally is uh, hypothermia. Well, where is the patient? Was the patient on the cold ground for a long time, or were they on the floor for a long time, right? That, remember that too, guys. Hypothermia can be caused by you're in a cold apartment on the floor, you know, you know, let's say, you, or, or a patient in the shower, you know, think about that as well. Finally, here we have uh, the T. 
So the way I go through, I start with the H's and I go through. The other H, the bonus H, the old school H, is going to be hypoglycemia. Well, guys, just do a blood sugar. Just do a blood sugar. And if it's off, fix it. You know, right? Blood sugar. T is going to be uh, toxins. So what does that mean? That could mean they overdose themselves. That could mean medications. That can be like, for example, like opiate overdose and when went respiratory arrest, cardiac arrest, toxins. Okay, poisoning. Tamponade, cardiac tamponade, could that be it? Now how do we get diagnosed having the field? Well, when we think about stuff like, you know, do an example, and I understand they're two different things, but I'm just saying, for example, if someone's had a half and a half peritonitis, that's the elevation all over. Now, we gotta know about cardiac tamponade, whether through medical or trauma in the field, probably not. Um, especially at a coding, all realistic in, you know, in reality. But it's on here. But it's on here. But it's on here, guys. No big deal. Then you have tension pneumothorax. These are gonna be your traumas, guys, if you're gonna figure these out. Trauma, tension pneumothorax is gonna be your trauma, obviously. And how do we fix that? We obviously grab our 10 gauge needle. We know where to go here, we come here, we come here, mid clavicular, and we can put the needle in, touching the thorax. You probably would have felt a lot of resistance when you're bagging also as well. Uh, that's another thing. Thrombosis. Is this an MI or a PE? Could this be it? Again, if you're at a point in a code where you're doing a 12 lead, now I keep bringing up the 12 lead. What I mean by that is, these HMTs guys can be used, and I, I personally use them two ways in the field in two ways. One is 20 to 30 minutes in a code, and wait, let's make sure we're not missing anything, HNTs. The second way I use HNTs, guys, is if they get ROSC. I wanna find out what happened. I go to my HNTs and I'm like, let's evaluate HNTs, and if they come back, what happened? That's where this 12 wood stuff comes in, makes sense? And then finally, guys, if trauma, but again, I'm looking for trauma over here, but is there any trauma that I've missed? I, the way I think about it is, am I missing a sneaky head trauma? Did this cause it, right? So guys, these are the HMTs. We went through pretty much all of them here. Now, how do we fix all these things in the field? IV fluid, obviously, you know, good, obviously good uh, airway, ventilation, attached to oxygen, sodium bicarb, hypo, hyper -K. Not really gonna you know solve that in the field, but be be pretty much aware of it. Do we carry some medications that can help with that? Yes, but again, it's gonna be more at the end of the day more of a hospital thing. Uh, we had hypothermia. Okay, keep your patient warm, obviously. I mean, you know, we know that. Uh, toxins. How are we gonna solve that? Well, is it an antidote for it? Go for it. Not gonna solve these, but we will solve with a needle here. Thrombosis. Alert the hospital. Trauma is going to be your trauma. Hypoglycemia, obviously fix a blood sugar issue. I know I'm keeping it basic here. I'm doing that for a reason because I know a lot of you guys are EMTs watching me or just getting into paramedic school. So I like to keep it simple. As we go on more advanced videos inside my course, whatever you guys do, we'll get more advanced. All right? Guys, thanks so much for watching. Join the paramedic coach family down below. Slap that subscribe button. Give me a like. Guys, comment down below what you thought about this lesson, and guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.